Put, put your fingers right here, you'll feel a hole, and then then. Put your fingers right here. It's where a Fu Manchu mustache would come down. Would come down. You're going to go in that hole and aim that way. Don't matter who. They're going to grab you. This one is perfect if they have you pinned up against a wall. This works best if it's somebody that bounced you in and has you trapped. So if you're near a wall, let them put you to the wall. Because when you're actually thrown into a wall and pinned against it by a larger person, there isn't much you can do. There are certain pressure points naturally you can do. But this is one of them. Because I don't care who it is, the harder he pushes this way, the more this is going to hurt him. You're going to go in to where I just showed you, and you're only going to turn your hand that way now. You're going to go in right here at stomach four and aim that direction. And the head is going to turn that way. If I go in on this side, the head's going to turn that way. What would happen with those nerves stretched if I decided to punch him right about now? <laughs> you understand? You'd probably break his neck. You'd probably injure and break his neck, especially if you hit triple warmer at this point, because you have the seventh facial nerve as stretched as it can get. You're not going to hit anybody there. But as they stand up and they move against you, you just rest the finger there, and you're going to go like this. If you're on this side, the head's going to turn that way. If you're on that side, it's going to turn that way. That pressure point, like this one releases the wrist, this releases the elbow, that releases the wrist, the neck, I mean. In ground grappling, you have to be careful to use that. Tara reminded me when I first met him in Sweden, I walked, I think it was at the boat, wasn't it? I walked up and knocked him out on that nerve. I said, how you doing? And I hit him and knocked him out on that nerve. I have been known to do things to people in public. You understand that? <laughs> I had a man in a pub up in Canada say, are you sure this works? And then he was down, and I'm going, hello, hello? He goes, I guess it really works. You're going to go in here, and you're just going to do this. I don't care how strong he thinks his neck is. He can lock his neck. It can be strong. I didn't have him grab me because it would hurt him. If he resists and pins you in and you do this, it's going to release that neck. You can actually just continue to break the neck with somebody else's technique they showed you this weekend, or you could just take him out on that side. And if I hit him that direction now, you're going to probably kill him. Probably kill him. You're going to break the jaw off for sure. So it's instant self-defense. Somebody pins you, you touch, aim that way. You touch, aim that way. Everybody try it. It's fun. That involves, that involves nerve, mental frame of nerve, and chi energy. You can mess that up many ways. You have to be careful. A lot of forms that I do that strike this way, I have that little knuckle that would go in that hole. And actually, if you struck hard, if the person had you hard, I think you'd break or sprain the neck with the strike because it releases the neck. You felt it. That's just from doing this. The harder he thinks he can hold you, the tougher he thinks he can hold you, the easier it's going to take him out. Got that? When I get in my study, if you get the book called Gray's Anatomy, a, a, a physi physiology book, but a Gray's Anatomy, not the TV show. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. But in Gray's Anatomy, it's a perfect picture of three nerves here. Three nerves here. Not these now, but between here and here, you have one, two, three. You see three little yellow dots coming up ending. That's the nerves that if somebody can take a shot, as a boxer, you have nerve that comes here, but it goes deep. It goes deep. If you cannot take a shot there, you have what they call a glass jaw. Not much you can do about it. You were born with a, a nerve too close to surface, here. And when I went into boxing training, and I used it on my students that would kickbox. 
I used it on Billy Blanks when he was going to fight for real. Uh, you have him bite on a terry cloth towel and you hit him under the jaw. If they can stay there and take it, they can then be a fighter. If you have a terry cloth towel in their mouth so they don't injure their teeth and their jaw and you just give them a decent wrap and they get dizzy, they're not going to take it. The nerve is too close to surface. But that nerve comes up and ends like that. You got that? Where's Graham? I'll show Graham. Oh, come here. You like to be hitting the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> you got this side of the body is yin. Now I have to be careful how I do this. Because I used to just do this. Early on I used to convince people three pressure points would knock somebody out. I used to tell them that. Early on, some of the people that are not even in my organization don't want to tell you, but they were knocked out with a ballpoint pen. I took a ballpoint pen, just went doink, and they pass out. Some people have a hard time dealing with that, that you can knock them out so easy. That's how easy it happens, though, if you know the nerves, you know the pressure points. And you have 361 places to attack, and each one's as big as the 10 pence or a U.S. quarter. But you have three nerves, not here now, but you feel here and you feel a little nobule. Feel a little nobule right there. Go dead center. Right here and you'll feel like a little, like you have a pimple. That's where the nerve ends. People come up and they say, well, I, I ask them, how would you hit this guy? And they tell me I'd hit him with an uppercut. I'd hit him with a right cross. I'd hit him with a left cross. If I hit him in an uppercut, keep your teeth together. He can take that. He has a deep nerve there. If he would have passed out there, I wouldn't have gone any further with my, my thing. But you have three points that close together, one in the middle, one quarter inch here, one a quarter inch here in this indent. This side of his body is yin. That side of his body is yang. I need a nice yin lady. Come here. You seem yin. I was looking people over. Take your finger. Take this finger. You're going to hold him. You're going to hold that point. So they want to get it on the camera. Let me place it. I'm the one who knows this. <laughs> I think she's falling in love with you. <laughs> so you're right there. Okay, now a little pressure down that way. That's it. I need a good yang. Yang per, you, you seem like a yang individual. You're going to stand off the side here, right here. You're going to take this finger. Now this is the ideal situation because I got yin holding his yin side, yang holding the yang side, and I take that finger and we just go in the middle to hunt. It's right there. Mm. <laughs> you all right? You weren't pressing. Hold that. Press. You press. Help me get him up. Help me get him up. Help me get him up. Hit him up. You see the pupils, how dilated? It immediately affects the eyes. You know it's a knockout if the pupils get dilated. You know it's a knockout. Stay there. You have moves in cotton. Thank you. Thank you for here. You have moves in katas that attack that spot. You have to be careful because at the same time, it has to be a serious situation because you can injure the neck with too hard of a hit because that releases the neck down and where the spine comes up can snap and cause what would be a whiplash in an automobile accident. So you don't just hit that spot 
But I just poked at it to show you how weak it is right there. Early on, I used to do that in seminars with pens. Ballpoint pen with the, with the point in, not the point out. And I'd have you hold a pen, you hold a pen. I'd take a third pen and go doink, and down they would go. Because I was trying to convince people, one pressure point causes pain, and it's area pain. Two pressure points cause the pain to meet in the middle. Three pressure points causes somebody to blank out. I used him because he was up behind the camera, and nobody had been hitting him. <laughs> well, I didn't want anybody that I was wailing on or that you were doing this and doing this and doing that. So I wanted to uh, use a fresh face. Was anybody hitting on you? Oh, come over here. <laughs> you better go back to camera. <laughs> I have moving cut that goes like this. It's one of my uh, favorite techniques. Because when I learned that moving kata, oh, do you volunteer?